Welcome back, beautiful cosmic beings of light to the Activation Hour with Susan and Sharon. In our last segment, we were talking about normalizing the overweight issue that seems to be prevalent in a lot of our world today. And Sharon and I wanted to take a minute to just simply say, we talk about these things and bring them up because I know for me and Sharon, I, I know that you agree with this. We love our sisters. We, we love the people that are with us, around us, near us. So in, in no way, shape or form was this something about being critical in any way. It was more or less a love of the health, a love of being able to see people in their vitality. And ironically, the guest that we have today, as Sharon will be introducing, is someone who really embodies sisterhood as well. So Sharon, I would love for you to be able to introduce our special guest that we have today. All right. Well, today we have Victoria Vivas Kwong, and Victoria is a champion of truth and consciousness. Her diverse and colorful history gives her a unique perspective and keen ability to connect with people from all walks of life and also pierce the confounding veils of ambiguity and misdirection that are so frequently employed by the powers that were. Raised in the ghettos of Spain as a multi-ethnic child by a single mother, Victoria grew from her experiences with poverty, racism, sexual harassment, congenital problems, and social stigma, only to achieve a high level of health, as well as success in the entertainment industry. In the midst of a series of severe life trials, culminating in a near-death experience, a spontaneous kundalini awakening, and involvement with occult societies while exploring metaphysics, healing, and martial arts, she left her old life in Spain to forge a new one in the U.S., with minimal English-speaking skills, no money, and no family to help her, Victoria hustled her way off the streets of Hollywood with brute determination. Through a series of profound learning experiences, she discovered her true calling as a herald of truth. Now she focuses on sovereignty, disclosure, exopolitics, and truth through her radio show, Earth Sky People Radio. She composes transcendental music and is the co-founder of the Earth Sky People Movement, Catalyzing Change and has also rediscovered the missing link in truth-seeking via ancestral wisdom through shamanic practices in the Zulu and cross-cultural lineages, as well as the connection with her star families and their invitation to partake in an intergalactic society. Welcome, Victoria, to the show. Hi. We're so happy to have you today. Hi, Sharon, and hi, Susan, and hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Victoria, I'm really curious to know about those early days in the jungle we call LA. <laughs> How did you survive and get to the point where you are right now? Oh my goodness, I really don't know. Uh, at a point, I had just like $14 in my pocket. I didn't have a place where I knew I could sleep because my roommate was leaving to, back to Spain, which was the safe idea. So I really thought I'm going to just sleep in the streets, but I didn't really care. My heart told me that this was my place. So it was scary, but I stayed. And I feel that every time that we answer to our heart, instead to our fears, things really come into place. So that same night, I was able to start working. <laughs> I was able to connect with somebody working in West Hollywood that had a nightclub. So I started making the email list so everybody that come to the place, you know, I had to ask them their name and email address, which wasn't very fancy after working in television for many years, but it really helped me. And this man was um, also inviting me to stay with him and he was gay, so it was fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because otherwise it would be like, oh, really? Mm -hmm. You're going to help me? Right. Mm -hmm. So at that moment, uh, really everything changed. I passed from living in East Los Angeles and eating raw Raymond uh, to be in the most beautiful places, in beautiful restaurants, because this man was very, you know, he was like my savior. And the mm -hmm. funny thing is that his name was Salvador, which oh, means, wow. it means savior in, in Spanish. And to me, there is something beyond the physicality that we live in. And when we are able to trust that above anything, miracles happen and this has been a constant in my life 
Well, you really took a great leap of faith. And where you are right now is amazing because you're helping so many people and you have such a beautiful life, oh, yes. such a beautiful attitude. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm very happy. Really, sometimes it seems that different lives, you know, it doesn't seem the same person that came here uh, to the person I'm now and how am I, I am able to, to be part of the flow of the universe. You know, I feel that I work for oneness. So for me, that is my employer. And I think that makes things different because before it was more about, oh, I want to be in Hollywood. You know, I was working in television and all of that. And it's very fancy, very glamorous. But in reality, it's not so much of being of service to the whole. So um, I feel that as soon as I surrender to my path, which is one of healing, everything came into place. And it was totally incredible. It's a miracle, really. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, Today, we want to talk to you about a lot of things. So <laughs> you have very, very wide base of knowledge. I'd like to start out by asking about what does divine feminine and divine masculine mean? Mm, my goodness, that's such a big theme and so important because we forget about these things. You know, we are so into paying our bills and going to our work, commuting here in Los Angeles, that we don't pay attention on these very important things. And we learn about sexuality from the movies in Hollywood, which, you know, they do a terrible job when it comes to <laughs> educating people. <laughs> so the divine feminine and the divine masculine is something that we both have. Uh, whether we are men or women, we have both aspects. And there is this separation and we start longing for the other side. So um, if we understand that we can reach both sides within ourselves, the dynamics between people in our relationship would totally change. But there is more than that, of course. What happened is that in our society, most of the people, at least where I was born and in my surroundings here in Los Angeles, most of the people are into Catholicism or Christianism. So everything revolves around men and Jesus. So we can never ever achieve Christ consciousness or true fulfillment or oneness unless we bring the divine feminine as well, which is Mary Magdalene. However, what happened is that what we learn through most you know, churches, at least what I learned in Spain, was that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. So then here we have Jesus representing men being the amazing being that we all want to become, and then Mary Magdalene being the lowest. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is, it's not bad to be a prostitute, but the way in which this was depicted is what makes it really bad because it is not like that. In reality, Jesus and Mary Magdalene together is the sacred union of Christ, Christed consciousness. Mm -hmm. So that is the representation of both, the divine feminine and masculine. So together they come into the hero's gamos. And that is the only way in which we can reach that oneness. So do you think that this portrayal of Mary Magdalene is all about suppressing feminine energy? My goodness, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> you just need to look at the world and see how women are treated. Thank God we're changing it. The thing is that in this process of changing it, we became men. I don't know about <laughs> you, but, <laughs> but on my path, I was a tomboy. Pull out. I was too. <laughs> I was a total tomboy. Right. As a kid, people thought I was a boy yeah, oh because I had God. short hair That's and I wore true. boys' clothes. <laughs> and 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 Victoria, I, I have to make this comment because I, I I'm hearing what you're saying in terms of what I'm gonna call resiliency for what you went through because being able to really follow your path and not follow those cues and signals around you about things that you should do in order to fit into society, in order to have the financing that you need in order to live. It sounds like you really went to the edge a couple of different times and you had to keep <laughs> finding that, I call it like that internal strength each time in shedding those things around you with the matrix to, to not accept that. And it sounds like you are somebody 
that has that capacity from the, the, the male standpoint, but also, you know, as I look at you and, you know, looked at some of your videos that you have this beautiful vibrancy, you're a gorgeous woman, you exhibit <laughs> an amazing vital life force and you see that. And, you know, to me, you're someone that has that balance. You exhibit that. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And you you're, know, <laughs> you're welcome. It has been not just a couple of things that happened in my life. It has been like a continuous happening. <laughs> so I feel that we are all invited in different periods of our lives to, to really go through those walls. Mm -hmm. And every time that we go through one with determination, with an open heart, and with the strength, we get to the next level I imagine you are very familiar with this uh, idea of peeling the onion, the mm -hmm. different layers of the onion. So mm -hmm. this can be done at a very huge level. <laughs> and we can all, I mean, we are all divine light. So how many layers are between us and that divine light? And how are we going towards that light or away from it? And our society in general is inviting us to get distracted from that. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened, that many people may receive signals from that, from that light, but they may not respond to the call. Mm -hmm. um, very true. And, and they might have to get hit by the universal two by four a couple of times <laughs> in order to respond. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I have, I lost my mom at a young age. My mom died when I was in my early 20s, and she was really sick for a long time. So she started getting sick when I was about five years old. So I lost that, what I call that female mentor in my life. And what I've been able to do is find so many other beautiful older females and now females that are my age and younger. And I have this tremendous sisterhood now. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so thankful for that. One of the things that I see that I believe that you can shed an enormous amount of light on is how do you think that women can best support each other? So in their divine feminineness, what do you see as a way that we can all best support one another? For sure, coming together and, you know, celebrating life, celebrating our lives as women celebrating the things that makes us unique or different from men. So sometimes in certain tribes, they will celebrate or have a special ritual when women are menstruating. Whereas here is something like if we can avoid it and, and not feel anything and, you know, I don't want to even know about it, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so hold mm -hmm. that thought, Victoria, because that ties so much into what we were talking about. We got to go for a quick break. Okay. And we'll be right back. <laughs> with the Activation Hour on TalkNetwork.com. Okay. Hi, this is the Health Ranger here with the Health Minute brought to you by store.talknetwork.com. The question today is, what is astaxanthin? Well, astaxanthin is an amazing nutritional supplement made by single-celled microorganisms. It is what turns salmon flesh pink and is believed to give them their incredible athletic ability to swim upstream and leap tall waterfalls to return to their spawning grounds. Astaxanthin is a fat-soluble carotenoid, which means it's a very high-powered, high-density antioxidant that's in fact hundreds of times more potent than vitamin C gram per gram. And because it's fat-soluble, you want to take it with healthy oils, such as fish oils or nuts or seeds or other oils that you're getting in your diet. The oils will help transport astaxanthin to where it's needed in your body's cells. Try it yourself. Get it now at store.talknetwork.com. Welcome back to the Activation Hour on talknetwork.com. We're talking with Victoria Vivas Kwong. And Victoria, please continue your thought on uh, female menstruation, how it's viewed in our society versus ancestral cultures. Yes, everything about women, our womb, our menstruation, our bodies, everything is so different from certain tribes. Uh, so once again, that aspect of menstruation is something that is a time for us to really have a strong intuition, to be in a quiet space and support each other. And this is beautiful, but however, in our society, is something that we avoid. And if we can just be more men than ever and, you know, take a pill so that it doesn't hurt, 
and a tampon so that <laughs> it is not noticeable. We try to to push away all of that that makes us women. And another aspect is also our womb. How many of us are truly connected with our womb? What is that, you know? It's our creating space within us. This is a sacredness, this is a miracle within us. So understanding all of this and also start embrace, embracing our bodies, uh, which, you know, you were mentioning about some people, whether we are obese or not, we don't have the standard of beauty that we see in the magazines. So then all of this creates a lot of also competitivity between women. You know, we want to be like the, I don't know, those ideals that, I don't feel it's, it's real. It's not necessarily real. Many times it's even Photoshop. So you're talking about exactly the things we were talking yeah. about in hour one. We were talking about tampons. Oh, because <laughs> yes, because we've learned that there are a lot of harmful chemicals exactly. in tampons, and, not only, and not only there's that. GMO cotton. There's there's glyph glyphosate. So let me ask, which is a pesticide. Oh my goodness. And we were also talking about body image because we were talking about the plus is equal ad campaign from Lane Bryant celebrating plus sized women, but ignoring the fact that people are becoming plus sized because of health problems. Mm -hmm. So we are, don't say to women with weight issues that there's anything lesser about them, but we are concerned about everyone's health and not normalizing a body image of poor health. Exactly, exactly. And also about the tampons, Tampons and diapers are something that are not very easily uh, recycled. So that means that we may have piles and piles of those things inside the earth. How does that affect the, matrix, the energetic matrix of the earth? All these things that we put in the earth, we forget about them. It's like, oh, well, we don't see it, you know? We, we but it's, it's really making a, a damage on our environment. It, very true. On the island that I live on, I'm not on there physically right now, but on the island of Kauai, I will say mm -hmm. that when I moved there a couple of years ago, I'd always hear women talk about their moon cycle. The mm. women are very honorable with the earth in reference to their cycle. And mm. I'll bring something up. I'm sure that you both have heard of this. I'm seeing it more and more, which is why I'm, I'm going to bring it up, that women are returning their blood to the earth. So they're not using yes, tampons. Exactly. They're not, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're going to these sacred places. I know on, on the island I live on, they are, and I know in other spots, and they're returning their blood to the earth. Yes, yes. That's what we need to do. And not only that, there are things that we can do with this blood. It's something sacred and we can set our intentions for our own healing, our sexual healing, our heart healing, our mind healing. is something that we should use for, for something better than throw it through the toilet or to the trash. It really should go to Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. How do we do that with our busy lives, though? How do we take the space and the time to celebrate our menstruation in that way. Right, right. You know, I feel everybody should have time to celebrate their lives in all aspects. So that means, <laughs> seriously, you know. Yeah, no, I love here. it. Keep going. I love it. <laughs> we're here on earth. This can be a paradise. So I don't understand what people is doing, going to, to their jobs, spending the whole day commuting, being there for something that they really don't love. So I feel that we all need to rethink our lives and it is hard i understand you know we're in this system and we have learned to live in a certain way but that's not the only way there are many possibilities and sharon you are an example of this so <laughs> so i want to say that because you know if you have done it everybody can do it i have done it too i don't know susan's situation but really when you start having your time for yourself then you can choose Today, I'm in my menstruation, so I'm going mm -hmm. to make the space. Mm -hmm. However, well, let's, let's talk about people that may not be there yet. So for somebody that is working regularly, they could still, um, they could still start learning different ways of, um, how would I say, calming their pain. So for example, I used to be in my menstruation and be doing martial arts because that, well, that was part of my job, doing martial arts, dancing, all of that. So I had to just take some Tylenol. However, later I learned how to do Reiki. So now every time that I have my period, I just do some Reiki on me. And what happens is that this builds up and now I don't even need to do that. So I don't have pain anymore. 
Mm-hmm. So, you, yeah, tell me, tell me. Do, do you, do you, I know that this is one of the big changes for me. So as I moved to this island, I, I, people call it a very female island. I've never felt my cycle be, I can't believe I'm mm-hmm. talking about this, but I know it's important. <laughs> it is important. <laughs> I know, I know. I just have to get over some embarrassment of it. Susan, this is what everyone uh, wants to yeah. hear. They want to hear about your cycle. Oh, God. <laughs> Just I'm watching here, you can't see me, but I am. But I, I noticed something that the more in tuned I was with nature, the the less that I had to worry about what was going on around me, that the more in tuned I was with nature, that during the time of my cycle, especially a couple of days before, you know, we always talk about being emotional before your cycle. Yet I felt like I was literally taking on so much of the energetics that were around me, almost like Mother Earth. And then during the time of my menstruation, I was releasing that and it felt natural. It didn't feel that it was something out of whack or that my chemicals were off in my body. It actually felt very natural and it felt real and it felt right. And it felt like I had a level of of empathy and compassion with the people and the the earth. And so that was one of the, the, the big things that shifted for me. And I, Sharon and and Victoria, can you comment on that as well? Do you find that that's what's happening with you? Because I'm I'm allowing more space when I'm feeling that way to honor those emotions and those feelings that are coming in, and then being able to release that. Yeah. Well, I've been making an effort to rest more when I need to during that time of the month. Take less painkillers because I know I'm just masking it, and I need to get into better health. When I, I used to be a vegan, I'm not a vegan anymore. But when I was a vegan, I didn't even have any menstrual cramps. But now the method of birth control I use causes me more cramps in a longer period, and it's a great inconvenience. I'm not really sure how to deal with it other than to take the painkillers when I need to. Although I've significantly cut back, so I'm not really sure how else to deal with it at this point. Mm. Well, I would recommend to try Reiki. Seriously, I had one of my students, uh, I teach Reiki, so one of my students came here and she used to go to the hospital every month because of the pain. So I shared with her this idea of giving herself Reiki and she emailed me back and said, you know, since I started with Reiki, I don't have to to go to the hospital anymore. So it really works. Sometimes we think that we need a pill or we need something external, but that is the medical industry, which is another big subject. Right. And that's another big lie is that we need to take pharmaceuticals for everything when the cures are right there in nature and maybe just a simple lifestyle change. Exactly, because what happens is that when I used to take the Tylenol, I was just totally ignoring my cycle. Whereas now I feel it. I embrace it. I, I do my Reiki when I need it. As I said, lately I didn't need it. But what happens is that I create, even if it is a little bit of attention or a space to my cycle, even that little bit to acknowledge instead of suppress, that makes a difference because we allow it to be processed. And also, as Susan was saying, once you, you allow this, you start connecting with other kind of energy. You start feeling more intuitive, more compassionate. You understand a different level of life for sure. Mm. Well, you know, I, there's definitely a connection between women and their cycles, especially when women live together. <laughs> Every woman that you'll ever meet will say when they have lived with other women, they all end up having their period at the same time. Right. Everything synchronizes, right? right? So how does that tie into all of this? Well, um, you know, that is called entrainment. So every time that we come into alignment with something else, that is entrainment. So the the sacredness and the force and the power of this time in our lives as women, and not just while we have menstruation, even people that is in menopause, they still have that connection with their womb and their sacred feminine, the divine feminine, that allows us to to really become into into an energy more of nurturing, more of connection, more of oneness. It is an energy that really embraces and envelops everything. So I wouldn't be surprised that that's the reason that we really come into alignment and oneness and interconnection. Mm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So 
Anyway, I would like to try Reiki for this because I've had a couple of Reiki sessions, mostly just to improve my mood and and to feel more relaxed. And it was very effective. Mm -hmm. And I was given the tools to do it on my own. Yes, that's what you have to do because going to somebody, I mean, it's great. But what happens if what what happened to me, how I discovered this about Reiki is that I was just uh, certified as a Reiki practitioner and I was going driving to a voiceover session and suddenly in the middle of nowhere in my car I get this pain incredible pain so I cannot say okay I'm going to go now to get a session you know <laughs> but right you have to take care of exactly. yourself when that happens. and that's the empowerment that we can gain for understanding that we don't need to depend always in other people it's good to be uh, interdependent uh, I don't know how to say it dependable and mm-hmm. and you know, self-empowered, but, but at the same time, self-empowered. So that means I count on you and you can count on me. But at the same time, I'm on my own and I'm OK, too. We need to take a quick break. You are listening to the Activation Hour on TalkNetwork.com. We will be right back with Victoria Vivas Kwan. to the Captain Obvious Health Minute. I'm Captain Obvious. A listener asks how can she improve her sex life? The answer, dear, is have more sex. Nailed it. Another listener asks how can I lose weight? I've tried everything. The answer, my friend, is have you tried eating fewer calories? Nailed it again. Another listener asks, my right foot experiences pain when I put weight on it. Hmm, well, don't put weight on it then. I'm on a roll, somebody bill Medicaid. And finally, a listener wants to know, how do I stop my head from hurting so badly? Well, stop banging it against the wall. This is Captain Obvious, and if you're looking for an obviously superior source of superfoods, check out store.talknetwork.com. Until next time! Hi, this is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, the co-founder of talknetwork.com, with a question and answer segment from our online store that you'll find at store.talknetwork.com. The question today is, what's the difference between chlorella and spirulina? Well, both are single-celled microalgae superfoods that are very rich in chlorophyll. But spirulina is much higher in iron, so it tends to be used by women who need to replenish their iron stores. Chlorella, on the other hand, is useful to both men and women because it's loaded with chlorophyll, it has chlorella growth factor in it, CGF, And it also contains enzymes, vitamins, and minerals, all in their plant-based form, their bioavailable form that your body can easily assimilate. It's much better than synthetic vitamins, and chlorella is a complete protein. Find them both at store.talknetwork.com. Welcome back to the Activation Hour with Susan and Sharon and our guest, Victoria. We were talking about self-healing, Reiki. We actually talked about our menstrual cycles <laughs> and how to bring more honor from a divine standpoint to our cycles. And one of the questions that I wanted to ask Victoria is looking at Reiki. I have a 13-year-old daughter that I think when she was about five years old, I went through Reiki, I guess you call it certification, and I had her go through it as well. So mm. one of the One of the things that I see is that her level of compassion is more heightened. She realizes that she can use the energy that's in her body to help me when I'm not feeling so great because I am a single mom, so I do appreciate Mm -hmm. her her support when when need be and vice versa. Of course, I I, I give that to her. Do you see that, that, because we talk about it being self-empowered, one of the things that I see is that the more people that are around you that do this type of healing the stronger it becomes almost more exponentially. Mm-hmm. Can you talk mm-hmm. about that? Absolutely. This is amazing. And I'm so happy, Susan, that you did this with your daughter. I did teach some moms and daughters, and it's the most beautiful experience mm-hmm. when, when they can share it because it really changes the family. If every person, um, not every person, 
every household will have at least one person that practices any kind of healing or any kind of um, practice that expands um, the consciousness, that will help so much its family. So, for example, now you have that possibility with your daughter, so you're not feeling, I imagine, as dependent as other people to go to the doctor because you have some remedies just with your hands mm -hmm. to give yourself or your daughter some relief from any pain. Yeah, yeah. I, I would only go to the doctor if I really needed to, if I was in <laughs> severe shape. Absolutely. Because and we just talked about that recently, and Susan's doctor experience was not very positive, but her acupuncture experience was very positive. Yes. Yeah, Victoria, I had people that ended up taking care of me that, that love me very deeply. So we just had to take self-healing uh, like to the next level. It was just what yes. was needed at the time. We are all healers, and we all have the that capacity. It's something natural. The thing is that nobody teaches us in school that we can do that. So we don't know what we're doing with our energy. So then I can imagine your daughter being five years old when she learned all of this, it really changes her perspective. Right, absolutely, absolutely. One of the things that I wanted to ask you about is, I know that you talked about star families and intergalactic connections. And I know that you do quite a few interviews with people, which I think is is great because you get a chance to interface and connect and see really the trends and the changes that are happening and going on. And what do you see as some of the, the, the big energetic changes that are going on in our planet as it relates to e us being able to tap into these different energetics like Reiki? I mean, what do you see as being um, some of the most important things right now, both, I guess, in your, your own intuition, but also the information that you've gleaned from all these wonderful people that you've spoken with? Well, I feel that since 2012, which is kind of, um, I guess, the topic thing to say about 2012, but it is true, you know, there was a big, big change. It was the, the ending of one of the big cycles of time. And after that, things have changed very much. So we have started connecting much more with those cosmic energies, which are part of each of us. Some of us have more connections. Some, some of us may have less, but we all have that aspect. And all of that is bringing a lot of awareness and not only the star families, but also connecting with our ancestors. That is what creates the full circle that is teaching us more about healing and consciousness and what is the potential of being human. So now, mostly our connections with our star families are going to be through journeying, meditation, through dreams, and this is a way that is very clever because that means that if somebody, you know, talking a little more about um, conspiracy theories, <laughs> uh, so if somebody uh, in power wants to control the information that we receive or any interactions we have, it is much more difficult to know anything that is happening if it is through dreams and through journeys, through meditations. So instead to have physical connection with those beings from other planets we or, or dimensions, mm -hmm. we actually have an internal experience of that connection with them. Mm -hmm. so, um, just a, a tiny bit more. So what, what is going to happen is that now, um, what I believe will, will happen is the um, disclosure. So then all of that that we are having inside that many people is not sharing, many people is very quiet about, mm. is going to start appearing in our outside. And mm. it's going to be something that everybody starts seeing. And one of the questions that I have that I'm deeply, deeply passionate about and curious about, I, I am someone who's had ET contact and I've talked a little bit about it here and there. And what I, I don't see in the disclosure movement, I see very little females in the disclosure movement. There's some, don't get me wrong, there's some. Laura Eisenhower is, is one. Yeah. And you don't see very many. And what seems to be prevalent the vast majority of times is this what I call this all-knowing story. Uh, and it's typically from a lot of the, let's say, males as well. So I see it to be an imbalance. I'm not sure mm. 
what it is that you see. I, I don't really see the beauty of the contact experience come to light or the regenerative process of the contact experience and, you know, of our interdimensional selves. Can you comment on that from your perspective? Because I, I feel like that, that's something that you really, that you really embody the, the essence of I infinity and, you know, the connection of life source energy. So I was wondering what your thoughts were on that. Yeah, so I think that there are a lot of women that have that connection. Maybe they are not so popular or so vocal, and maybe it's a little bit more of an internal connection, so it's less expressed, which is part of also of the feminine aspect, not to be so much out there sometimes. So I think that there is a lot of people, um, a lot of women, that are having these connections and I had the pleasure of interviewing some of them like Laura Eisenhower that you mentioned, uh, Lynn, um, I don't remember the last name right now, but mm -hmm. she produced the, um, the Phoenix Light, mm -hmm. Lights, which is very powerful. So there are big powerful women in this too. Mm -hmm. It's true that there is not as many and it may be just because of that energy being a little more internal and also because we have, I think we, by nature, are much more intuitive in general. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's something that is one of our qualities. Um, and sometimes we are not exactly appreciated for that. Uh, in general, in our society, we value facts and intuition is not so important. And many of these connections are more in our inner self. Mm -hmm. in our in our dreams in our intuition so i think that because of that we are seeing much more facts and and, and men sharing a different kind of information mm -hmm. mm. is this part of the the war on consciousness because i noticed that there is a lot of people want a very very scientific explanation yes. but they're only looking in a mechanistic way mm -hmm. so they're not looking functionally right. and i'm Good not point. talking yeah, mm. and Wilhelm Reich, who I admire greatly, talks about mechanistic thinking versus mystical mm. thinking, and we are looking for some happy medium here. Yes. So, is this part of the war on consciousness? This this totally like mechanistic fact fact based way of thinking? Absolutely, because you know what happens that many of these beings that we are connecting with are not just extraterrestrial, but extra dimensional, which mm -hmm. means that we are connecting with them in different dimensions. Because it's not the same somebody that lives in the other part of the galaxy. Imagine, by the time they arrive here, how many years? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're gone already, you know? So it's, it's much easier to really connect in different ways that is not necessarily physically. So that is not mechanically. That means that it's much more in the mystical way. Right. So in what ways, in your experience, do you see that there is a war on consciousness and how, how is our consciousness suppressed and how can we open up again? Yeah, so our society keeps us in the three lower chakras. So what happened is that through our survival state, you know, in, in our lives, we just live to survive, not to thrive. So that keeps us in the root chakra, which is all about survival and the fear of not surviving. So that's one very powerful force that drives most people's lives. Mo Can you explain where the root chakra is? Yeah, the root chakra. For anyone who doesn't know. Of course, yeah. Um, the root chakra is at the base of the spine and it's part of our energetic system. So um, it helps us surviving. As soon as we are born, that's the first chakra that is activated because we need it in order to survive. Mm -hmm. The thing is that in this society, we are very quickly put in, into this fear. Am I going to survive? So then our energy, instead of flu um, flowing through all our chakras, is stuck because of that fear. It's like a blockage there. So that would be the first thing that keeps us suppressing other aspects, like oneness. The second chakra, which is by the belly, is inside the belly, um, that would be the sacral chakra. So that is all related to the uh, sexual energy, the divine feminine, and we talked about that subject already. So there is a lot of guilt about that subject. And, you know, expressing our sexuality is a theme that is so reversed and so complicated right now. Mm -hmm. And there is so much abuse that also we feel that sense of guilt 
uh, any time that we have pleasure, it's like there is not a balanced or harmonious um, experience of it. It is it is not the divine aspect for sure. So um, that is going to also get a lot of difficulty for our energy to flow through all our chakras. And then finally, the third chakra, and that is keeping us from that oneness, is the solar plexus chakra, which is in the rib cage. So that chakra is related to personal power, which is a beautiful thing when we use it in the right way. That means that we can use that power to support all of life. In that way, we are part of the plan and we need that power. We cannot be just love. We need that power. But in our society, it's totally mechanistic, like you were saying, and it's all about uh, external power. So it's about more money, having, I don't know, a success and all of that, but it is not so much about that internal power that is going to help the world. So those three chakras are the ones that are very much um, uh, strengthened in the matrix we live in. And it is very difficult to reach the fourth chakra, which is the heart, where we can find that oneness, that compassion, that affinity with, uh, with other people. And it's interesting because that chakra is related to the fourth dimension of four, um, where, where other entities may reside. So that is oh, the astral, okay. it's our astral body that lives oh. in the astral plane. And most- Well, great, Victoria, <laughs> uh, we'll be right back. Yes. We, we'll come right back to this <laughs> on the Activation Hour on talknetwork.com. <laughs> Welcome to the Health Minute. I'm Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, with my sidekick, Tonto, not far behind. The topic today is what about heavy metals in superfoods and nutritional supplements and even certified organic products that are coming from China? Well, you may not be aware of this yet, but the Talk Network online store, which you'll find at store.talknetwork.com, uses our own private laboratory where I am the lab science director and we test everything that we sell for toxic heavy metals such as lead, cadmium, arsenic, mercury, and even elements with radioactive isotopes such as uranium, strontium, and cesium. And if it doesn't show up as really, really clean, we reject it. And yes, we test this with university level equipment, ICPMS instrumentation, sensitive down to parts per billion concentrations. So if you want really clean foods, superfoods, and nutritional supplements that are laboratory validated, get them now at store.talknetwork.com. Welcome back to the Activation Hour. We're here with Victoria Vivas Kwong. And if you're liking what you're hearing, please support the network and our show. Go to activation.talknetwork.com for great natural news products. Victoria is taking us from the 3D into the 4D right now. So let's continue on that journey, Victoria. Sure, yes. So um, what happens is that we have different bodies. We know that we have the physical body because it's the only one that we relate to in general in our society, in our schools, in television. We talk always about the physical body, but there are more bodies. And this is something that is known in different traditions in a slightly different ways from the ancient Egypt, Egyptians to the uh, Hindu people. Uh, so I'm going to talk from the Hindu perspective. Um, we have several bodies and we have, um, each one is related to, um, to a different chakra. So we have the astral body, which is related to the heart ch chakra. And the astral body resides in the astral plane. So there is a place where we are existing that we are not very familiar with. We are actually totally oblivious to that place. And there is people that experience, um, what is the name? Mm, so I forgot when, oh, when extraterrestrial beings get them. Uh, contact? Uh, but the abduction. 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 So there is, yes. Ah. So there is people that experience abduction when they are in that astral plane, but they are not aware or have no power in that space. There is people that experience like a connection with ex spirits or entities that are not pleasant. And it is so because we don't take charts. It's like if, if we have uh, a car that we have it in the middle of, I don't know, a ghetto, <laughs> and we never go see it. So people is going to be around. The people that knows how to go through that ghetto is going to do something with it. So we have to take responsibility of all of our bodies. It's, we really... It's 
You're talking about, sp I call it spiritual maturity. Yes, please. We need that. <laughs> right? And we, we don't know because our, our society is so locked in terms of what we feel is acceptable to talk about or to not talk about, right? right. That there's such an immaturity around these different realms that we're in and how our energy body relates to it. That when there is an experience in the astral realm, if it's, a, a, let's say, a good experience or not a good experience, then we're struggling a bit in terms of how we even begin to talk about it or maybe even how we manage it. So the fact that we're just being able to do that right now, it gives us maybe a little bit of a hope and in, in some chance that <laughs> we'll be able to mature more as it relates to how we're dealing with all these different beings as, as they're connected to us and we're connected to them. And great tips for avoiding abduction by aliens. Oh, yes, yes. And, you know, I feel that we have gained a lot of awareness. This is one of the changes I noticed and. Uh, in 2012. So what happened is that before 2012, when I was teaching, I would ask, okay, who is familiar with the chakras? And maybe one person in the class was familiar. And now since 2012, mm. I ask, who is familiar with the chakras? And everybody raises their hand. <laughs> and it's that's like, great. really? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. And that's mm -hmm. amazing because that means that we are honoring part of ourselves that we totally forgotten about for years and millennia, really. What do you, what are your thoughts on psychedelics? I know that there's some people that have come into this world that haven't ever needed psychedelics who have <laughs> ET contact or they have spiritual experiences. They remember past lives. They know that they're maybe here to do a job, but part of their being is, is elsewhere in the universe. And, you know, so that they, that some of, some folks are coming in like that and other folks feel a need to do psychedelics, whether it be ayahuasca or mushrooms or LSD in order to open up their their pineal gland. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, one, in terms of using psychedelics, but also maybe what type of beings people experience in that realm? So I don't have experience with that. I have my thoughts on it, so I will share that. Please, um, yes. <laughs> I have a students, you know, I have a students that do that, and some of them do it on a regular basis. My perspective on it is that it's kind of the shortcut mm -hmm. to experience something instead to train our minds and our energies to do it. So I feel that it's much more powerful to really train ourselves through practice on how to reach those states of consciousness that are available for everyone. And then if after that you want to go and try something like that, it's completely different than never experience anything, never practice meditation, never practice journeying, and then suddenly say, okay, I'm going to take the shortcut. I have a lot of experience with psychedelics myself, actually, from when I was young. Yeah. And what I wanted was an expanded state of consciousness. Yeah. But I didn't know about these other tools at oh. that point. And this was quite some time mm. ago. And what I've noticed for myself and others I've read, like Ram Dass, uh, started out with a lot of LSD back in the 60s. Oh, and that led him, he, he grew tired of it. He got what he could out of it. And then he went to India and learned meditation from masters. Oh. So I can just speak for myself. And my own experience was at a young age, not knowing any of this thing and growing growing up in a time before this great awakening, well before mm, this great awakening, yeah. I found them to be a useful tool to show me more clear ways of seeing and thinking. So I wasn't using it as, you know, a, a good time or a party or anything <laughs> like that. Yeah. I was using it in a spiritual awakening and I tried many things and goodness knows uh, mm -hmm. I could go into that for a while. But I will tell you this, <laughs> I'm at a stage of my life now where I am not interested in that anymore because I've been meditating for years oh, yeah. and learning new ways of exploring consciousness. And in fact, the last time I took a psychedelic drug, I took mushrooms with a friend and saw a film, which was maybe a little too heavy. <gasps> it was way too heavy for her. For me, I looked at it at the same the same exact way that I would have seen it if I wasn't on oh, mushrooms. Mm -hmm. So you get to a point and you get to a point where you don't need them anymore, mm. where you don't see anything differently anymore. Wow. Yeah, you know, actually 
<laughs> one of the, I just want to share this. One of the things. So, Victoria, I know you you don't know me so well. Uh, mm -hmm. I I came in. I remember incarnating in. So I incarnated in consciously, and I've had ET contact pretty much most of my life. And I've I've seen various beings. I've also seen people I love pass and then come in uh, as well. So for me, coming into this world, there really wasn't much of a separation between mm. the etheric world and our day to day world. It was just like okay, have to live live both. But I ended up doing ayahuasca because I was actually extremely sick a couple of years ago. And when I did ayahuasca, what I realized was that I didn't know that there was a world called, what you know, for me, what I would say is the astral realm. Um, I didn't oh. know that there was like this fourth density world. I had come in from a place that I thought was all light <laughs> and oh. that there was a lot of goodness there and it was infinity. And then doing ayahuasca, I actually realized that there were other beings that were not so kind and not so mm -hmm. benevolent. And, and that was for me, like it didn't, for me, it didn't open up my consciousness in the sense of this infinity. It actually showed me that there's other energies that are around this earth that are actually not so good. And it was one of the reasons I got sick and, you know, what have you. Uh, so it's, it's interesting that psychedelics seem to do a variety of different things for many hmm. people because we're all at different, you know, spaces and in places along the way. But one of the things that I'm hearing you say, and Sharon, I think you're saying it as well, that we can get to these different expanded states of consciousness just simply by, and not that it's so simple, right? But by <laughs> be, being more aware of our energy and being in tune with our connection to something greater, call it source, than, than maybe what we think we are today. Yes, we don't need drugs to have a good time, kids. So stay <laughs> in school. <laughs> well, and you mentioned the uh, energetic system as a way to get out of the matrix, Victoria. That's something you talk about. So I think that that's what this leads to is we can use our own energy to reach a higher state. Yes. How do we do that? How do we get into those higher chakras? We only have a little bit of time left, a couple minutes here. Okay. If mm. you can get into that a little, that would be awesome. <laughs> okay, the crash course. <laughs> okay, so the most important is, is to start understanding our energy and how to manage it. And instead to feel that our lives are guided by these feelings like fear, guilt, and shame, which shame I didn't mention, but is the, the one related to the solar plexus, mm. So when we can go beyond that and start focusing on our hearts, which is more working towards love. So making our decisions in our lives because of love instead of fear, guilt, or shame. When we start doing that automatically, our energies are going to start rising into that center. And from there, it can go above and above and above to reach all of our chakras. And when we are able to connect all of our chakras instead to feel like cut at the chest, which is how we live in this society, then that power from our cosmic, cosmic energy is going to start coming through. And this is going to be what is really creating a new earth, is really connecting us, you know, we're transforming things, we're finding new possibilities. And the more we understand how this works and we are free in the astral plane, which doesn't have to be bad, it's just that right now, we left it abandoned and, you know, we didn't take care of it. Mm. But once we own our astral plane and our astral body, then things are going to start moving from there. Mm. Wow. Well, Victoria, can you take a moment to tell us your websites? You've got a lot Ooh, of projects you do. So please take a moment to let us know where we can go to learn more about what you do. Yes. So I think the easiest way is just go to victoriavives.com, which is Victoria. V I V E S dot com, and then from there you can go to like a hundred websites. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I'm also creating a, an intentional community in Los Angeles, which is also part of this coming out of the matrix for people that wants to pursue this actively because we can talk and talk and talk, but we need to take steps to create a new world. So, those are a couple of things. <laughs> Well, that's wonderful, Victoria. Thank you so much for being with us here today on the Activation Hour. I always love speaking with you. I, I always enjoy listening to your knowledge oh, and wisdom. I love to speak with you, too. <laughs> and, and Thank Victoria, you. we need to have you back because we didn't even get into sacred sexuality. And I know that there's a lot that you've got to offer on that. And I feel like that's something that the three of us should be able to have a really wonderful discussion about. 
Sounds great, Susan. It's so good meeting with you. <laughs> same here, same here. <laughs> well, thank you very much. The Robert Scott Bell Show is coming up next here on talknetwork.com. You've been listening to the Activation Hour. Please visit our store, activation.talknetwork.com. You'll find great natural news products there. All these products are tested by Mike Adams, so they're clean and pure. No heavy metals, no contaminants. You can feel very secure using the supplements and vitamins at Natural News, Mm -hmm. activation.talknetwork.com. Thank you so much, Victoria, for being with us here today. Thank you as well. (laughs) Come back next week. Come visit with us again. Thanks for listening to the Activation Hour. Hi, this is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, the co-founder of TalkNetwork.com, with a question and answer segment from our online store that you'll find at store.talknetwork.com. The question today is, what's the difference between chlorella and spirulina? Well, both are single-celled microalgae superfoods that are very rich in chlorophyll. But spirulina is much higher in iron, so it tends to be used by women who need to replenish their iron stores. Chlorella, on the other hand, is useful to both men and women because it's loaded with chlorophyll, it has chlorella growth factor in it, CGF, and it also contains enzymes, vitamins, and minerals all in their plant-based form, their bioavailable form that your body can easily assimilate. It's much better than synthetic vitamins, and chlorella is a complete protein. Find them both at store.talknetwork.com.